Do you ever just sit on Weird's upcoming page and hit refresh over and over again all day? No? Yeah, me neither. Well, great news anyway because they actually recently updated the upcoming page and we got a whole bunch of first looks at some of the stuff coming in Ashes of Malifaux. So I'm going to take you through it all and talk about what we know and make some guesses about what some of these things might be. But before we get into all that, let's jump right to the most important bit, and that is that the book should be releasing in February of this year. Now, obviously, Weird and many other companies have had lots of trouble with supply chain issues and getting things sent over here from overseas. So that's probably still a somewhat tentative date, but we're getting pretty close here. So I think there's a good chance that we actually see it release in February. Now, we've already seen the cover before, but we do also get this little blurb of text about what's going to be in the book. And it talks about how there's a lot of people who are studying the Burning Man and trying to figure out some of its secrets, but there's also people working on trying to destroy it. Now, we know that this is supposed to be the resolution of the Burning Man story arc, and I've said this before, I don't think we're going to actually see the Burning Man get destroyed permanently. I think we're going to see it be defeated and maybe go into sort of remission and go away for a while, but I don't think they're just going to eliminate it from the story because there's always that possibility that he's going to come back in the future. And the Burning Man is half Sharufe, which is a tyrant, and we've never seen a tyrant just be destroyed before. Now, let's go back up to the top and look through the January releases. First off, we have these Barely Together plushies, which if you saw my video from PAX Unplugged, then you know they were, had them on sale there, and they seem super popular. They're actually way bigger than they look. Uh, hand here for scale. And they're pretty cool. It's kind of interesting that they show them in a different paint scheme than what we see in the actually Barely Together art. The black and green looks pretty cool. The next thing we have here is the first three releases for the Kimon faction for the other side. Now, these have been on early release both in the Black Friday sale as well as at PAX Unplugged. And I actually managed to pick up a set of them myself. I'm really excited about the other side, especially with the two new factions coming out. So I was super eager to get my hands on these. And I've already done a couple of short videos on those. But the most important takeaway is that the quality of the models has been improved dramatically. It looks like the new TOS stuff is going to be made with the same type of material that the pre-assembled Malifaux models are made out. So if you've picked up the starter boxes, for example, then you have a kind of an idea of what they look like. Some of those early starter boxes, I thought that the details on them were a little bit soft, but they've gotten a lot better over time, and the amount of detail on the TOS stuff looks really nice to me. So that's definitely good news because there was a lot of issues with the type of material it was made out of originally. All the bendy weapons and saggy bits. I still haven't managed to get a game in with the new factions for TOS, but I know the Vassal module has been updated, so if you're interested in getting a game in, you can try them out. And huge shout out to Metalhead on Discord, who does a lot of the legwork for updating that module. So thanks a lot to them. Now, moving on to some of the juicy new bits, we have the Grim Specter's Feast. Now, like with almost everything that we've seen coming up for Ashes and Malfoy, this box is going to be dual keyword within the same faction. And in this case, it's going to be for both Riva and Yan Lo. Now, since this page got updated, we actually got a Waldo's Weekly with a full breakdown of both of the models that come in this box, so we know a whole bunch more. But the interesting thing here is that this was actually a pursuit, or a class, in Through the Breach, which is the Malfa RPG, going back to the Under Quarantine expansion from years back. This model is based on the art from that pursuit, and we get a little bit of lore in the book about Ghost Eaters, where we learn that they are people who can actually absorb the souls of dead people, very similar to the way that the Soul Stone works. And we also learn that the original ones came from the Three Kingdoms, but a whole bunch of them died during the process of opening the first breach. A couple of them survived, and there have been known to be a few people who were not from the Three Kingdoms who had the ability to manipulate souls in this way. So it's definitely appropriate that they're going to work in Yan Lo's crew. Now, going along with that, we actually see a whole bunch of different abilities on the Ghost Eaters card that interact with soul stones in different ways. So he's got a tune, meaning that he can use soul stones. Empower, which is another common ability that kind of boosts the soul stone usage. And then the final veil, which means that he heals when somebody dies. And the interesting thing there is that in the narrative, that would be the way that you would actually charge a soul stone. But because Ghost Eaters kind of work like soul stones themselves, he actually absorbs the spirit and heals from it. On a similar note, we have Consume Essence and Instill Youth, which are both heals, something that we've always seen soul stones be able to do in the fiction. And then Spirit Barrage, which is just kind of a thematic ability for him to be able to use. And another fun thing is that Spirit Barrage and Instill Youth are actually both abilities that are taken right out of Through the Breach, as they're abilities that you can gain when you play that pursuit in the RPG. Although they work a little bit differently. Now, another interesting thing is that the Ghost Eater comes with these ghost lights, which are not things that we've seen before. But they seem to basically be souls that are lingering around and can be both summoned and then used by the Ghost Eater. They can basically be used as soul stones with Consumed Soul, which obviously couples really well with some of the abilities that the Ghost Eater has to buff the soul stone use. So I see a lot of connections here with Yan Lo and his crew, but it's going to be interesting to see how they interact with Reva. Because her whole thing is that she's trying to help the dead and dying sort of move on peacefully. So I'm not sure how she would feel about people yanking out their souls and using them to do their bidding. But I guess we'll have to wait and find out. Now next up we have some love for the guild with the always watching box. And again this is going to be dual keyword with journalist and guard. So this box is going to come with the nightcrawler network and three camera bots. And the nightcrawler network we actually got to look at the card for at Nova a couple months back. 
If you want to take a look at all of the cards that were shown at Nova, then you can check out the Malifaux channel on my Discord. I have the messages pinned with pictures of all of the reveals that they showed there. Now, the Nightcrawler Network, as far as I know, is not something that we know about in the lore yet, but it seems like they're going to be some sort of spy network that operates as part of the Guard, and maybe get some scoops in for Nelly and the Tattler. The Nightcrawler Network will be able to summon the camera bots and then actually use abilities, drawing range and line of sight from them. Assuming that all this stuff stays the same, that is. And then they have a whole bunch of abilities that allow them to manipulate ski markers and do things like replace enemy ski markers with your own. Which seems like it'll go really well along with a Nelly or a Daisho crew. Not much else to say about this one except that the models look really cool. He's got a weird like Navy SEAL meets Doc Ock setup going on. And then all of the camera bots are disguised in funny ways which will make them fit in really well with Nelly and the rest of her crew. It seems like there's going to be a little bit of a push towards getting every faction a cheap summonable minion that can do different things, like we've seen with drudges or mindless zombies in the past, so it'll be interesting to see if they carry that over to the rest of the factions and what they're going to get that works in a similar way. Next, we're going back to the Resurrectionists for the Ferryman's Toll. Now, this is something that was shown in Waldo's Weekly a while back as well, and this is Carrie Zotico and the Ferryman. So this box is actually based on a Through the Breach Penny Dreadful that was put out years ago. So we actually know quite a bit about Kari Zotico's backstory as well as the Ferryman. Now, if you want to get the full story, I actually ran that adventure on my channel with a bunch of members of the community, and it's up on the channel as a full playthrough, so you can check that out if you have three or four hours to sit down. It was a really fun adventure, so I do recommend it. But if you want the TLDR, Kari Zotico had a ship, and she was working with the Arcanist to move some material around, but at some point she realized that smuggling dead bodies to Resurrectionists was actually much more lucrative. Now, corpses aren't always so easy to come by, so Kari had to come up with a creative solution, and that creative solution was murder. She actually made a specialized undead, the Ferryman, to go out and hunt people on the river and bring back their bodies so she can go off and sell them. Now, major spoilers for the Penny Dreadful, but the idiot the party actually investigates and then winds up tracking her down and killing her. Or at least that's one of the possible endings, but based on the fact that she used to be living and now she looks like a ghost, it seems like that's probably the canon ending. The Ferryman itself also got a pretty cool upgrade because it used to just look like a kind of generic undead, and now it's this cool thing that looks like the bow of a ship. I think it was always pretty obvious that this was going to be part of Kirai's crew, but it was always kind of up in the air as to what the other keyword would be. But I think Tormented makes a lot of sense, because they have a lot of these sort of undead and ghostly forms that are kind of out for revenge. Now, Q1 is definitely going to be the quarter of the Resurrectionist, because the next box that we have is also going green. So this one is called Abracadaver, and the fun thing about this box is that it's full of gremlins, but nothing in it is actually by you. It's all Resurrectionists. Specifically, the models here are versatile models for the Resurrectionists. So they don't necessarily go specifically with one keyword. And Ezekiel is a character that we also saw back in Nova. So we've gotten a little peek at his card already. Now he looks like he's dressed like a Bokor, which are the necromancers from the bayou, who tend to live around Kythera, where they've gotten a bunch of the Grave Spirit's energies and started doing weird magic. So it's no surprise that this guy's actually a summoner and he works with the Mindless Zombies. Which is why we're also getting five new sculpts of the Mindless Zombies in this box. And they're all gremlin based. Now this is something I wasn't expecting, but I think it's a really cool idea to get new sculpts of the Mindless Zombies and to base them on something other than humans. I think it would be cool if they did stuff like this more often, similar to the way they did a Deva that looks like the Shadow of Nephilim recently. Now, shout out to everybody on the Discord who was scrambling to try to figure out what the lore connections and the real world inspirations were for all these new models as soon as this stuff posted on the website. And Spanner Rider mentioned that these models might be based on horror movie villains. Now, I'm not really big on horror movies, so I don't really see it here, but let me know if you recognize any of these gremlins or the inspiration behind them. We know that folks at Weird are big fans of horror, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was true. Now, next up is one that I'm super curious about, and it's called She of Two Skins. The models in this box are called Sightless Snow and Cedro, and they go with Marcus and Rasputina. Now, the question here is, is this snow as in Snowstorm, the former silent one who had all kinds of bad December stuff happen to her? It seems like it probably might be, but then the question is, why did she lose her sight, and what is this strange Cthulhu reindeer that she's running around with? I'm really curious to know what's going on here, and I hope we get some actual narrative that explains what the connection is with her, this animal, and Marcus and the rest of Chimera, because we haven't really heard much from Snow in a while in the story. Now, the other interesting question will be, if this is Snow, will you be able to hire Snowstorm and Sightless Snow into the same game? My guess is no. If they're the same person, you can't have two copies of them, but I'll be curious to see how they handle that. Maybe this is the first that we're seeing of henchman titles? Question mark? Eh, probably not, but a guy can dream. Next up, we have the Crook skins from Mimic and Savage. And you might recognize these guys because White Eyes was a model that came out last time. And these things look kind of similar to him. And the reason for that is that White Eyes is actually a Crook skin. These are the generic versions of that model, if you will. Shout out to Swarm Lord for pointing that out. And we know from the Through the Breach augment that Crook skins are feral mimics that sort of haunt other Neverborn. 
They creep around in the less populated areas of the Knotwoods, and they have limited ability to transform, but, but they're actually boogeymen for the other Neverborn, which is interesting because any monster that the monsters are afraid of has to be pretty terrifying. And these things are pretty ugly, so it makes sense. Next up, we have Bloodletting for Returned and Swamp Fiend. And in this box, we get the Leech King and two giant leeches, which are really horrible and really awesome looking. Now, the Leech King we've never met before, but the giant leeches are actually from Through the Breach. What do you know? The Into the Bayou book actually had Bayou Leeches, and they were height 1 in that game, which is equivalent to size 1 now. But I think based on this picture, they've had a little bit of a growth spurt. Now, interestingly, in the little fluff bit that we get that goes along with the Bayou Leeches, it mentions that there's sort of rumors of much bigger versions of the leeches, possibly as big as the size of a large dog. But, again, based on these renders, this looks more like it's bigger than a human, so I guess bad things happen. But really cool looking model, it kind of reminds me of a creepier version of the Sandworm. And I'll be curious to know what the Leech King's relationship is with them and how he interacts with them. Both from a mechanical standpoint and from a narrative standpoint, of course. Next up we got Old Hob, again, for the Resurrectionists. This one is versatile, so it doesn't go along with any specific keyword. And this is interesting because we used to know this, at least the image of this model, as the Plague Picker. So in the Under Quarantine expansion, which is the Resurrectionist focus expansion for Through the Breach, we had the model called the Plague Picker, which looks very similar to Old Hob. Some minor differences, but you can obviously see it's based on the same art. Now, interestingly, according to the little blurb here, it was actually marked with a guild insignia, and it showed signs of mass production, which indicates that there may have once been a series of these constructs, and the particular one that's talked about here was found wandering around collecting bodies. Now, obviously, Old Hob is not going to be a guild construct, so I'll be curious to find out if maybe they stole one from the guild and repurposed it, and perhaps Old Hob is just the name of that one particular unit, or if there's some other explanation here. Maybe it's something that McMorning stole on his way out when he got fired from the guild. Who knows? But either way, this thing is 35 bucks, so we can expect it to be a pretty big bottle. And I always love getting big zombie robots, so I'm excited to see it. Next up, we have Prey Slain for the Explorer Society. And it seems like this one's going out to the Bloodborne fans out there. This is going to work with Apex and Cadmus, and we have two models in here. Kanehurst and the Ahul. Now, if you're not familiar, Kanehurst, spelled with a C, is a castle and a location in the game Bloodborne. And Prey Slain is also a big thing in that game, so there's a clear connection here. And in addition to that, the attire that this guy's wearing clearly inspired by Bloodborne, so also really cool. Now, I'll be curious to see if there is a sort of antagonistic relationship between Kanehurst and the Ahul, like you see with Lord Cooper and the Runaways, where maybe they'll have some sort of interaction where they can fight each other and you get some sort of benefit. But I think it's more likely that he'll probably just be controlling this thing in some way. Another thing that I noticed here is the Cain and Abel connection, Kanehurst and Ahul. Kind of sounds like Cain and Abel. So I wonder if there's going to be any sort of mechanic where if you kill one of them, the other one comes out to get revenge against you. That would be another really cool subtle little detail. But as we've seen with most of this stuff so far, the Ahul is also a creature from the Bestiary and Through the Breach. So this one also comes from Into the Bayou, and we get an image of it here that looks pretty similar to the new art. And we get a little bit of info here about how they live in the Bayou, they have excellent hearing, and they feed off blood. So really wholesome and wonderful stuff. Now, I did also want to mention that an Ahul is actually a real cryptid in real life. Well, real cryptid, you know what I mean. They come from stories in Indonesia, and they're basically a combination of a bat and a monkey. It's pretty horrifying stuff, uh, but it's also really cool, so you should check it out if you're curious. And last but not least, we have Noxious Atmosphere, which works with the Free Corps and Plague. They're going to have two types of models inside, the Tunnel Rats and the Fumigator, a.k.a. the Disease Containment Unit. You didn't think we were done with Through the Bridge, did you? They got all this great art just sitting here unused. Why wouldn't they use it to make new models? So this time the model's from Above the Law, which is the guild expansion, and interestingly is another one that sort of seems to have switched factions in the transition over to Malifaux. According to what we know, the disease containment unit was used to stop the spread of mosquitoes throughout the city, but eventually when the Piper's Plague began coming back, they sort of got repurposed to trying to slow the spread of that disease. Now, maybe some of these guys abandoned the guild like the Free Corps did originally and went and signed up, or maybe they're a whole new thing that's just sort of based on the same idea that the guild had. But either way, clearly inspired by that. And this is another one that we got to peek at at Nova, and if the card stays the same, it's going to be pretty interesting. It's got a really cool gun here that does blast on every step on the damage track and gives out poison. Now, the Tunnel Rats we don't know about, but it'll be interesting to see how they interact with the Fumigator and why they seem to be working together. But we could just kind of take a wild guess here and say that they're probably going down into the sewers to find any traces of disease that might be down there. So that's all the news we got so far for the release for Ashes of Malifaux. Now, the releases run from January through March, and as a reminder, the book is coming out in February, so as soon as that drops, we'll know everything there is to know about what's coming. And if you're eager to know more, then I've done a couple of videos speculating about some of the things that Weird might pull up from, both through the Breach and the wider lore, that we could see appearing in Ashes of Malifaux. So definitely check both of those out. 
I'm super excited and I bet you are too. So drop a comment below. Let me know which of these models you're the most excited about. And do you have any pet theories about what they mean for the lore or for the mechanics of the game? Before you go, don't forget to drop me a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. Check out all the important links in the description, including the merch store, the weird affiliate link where you can shop through Weird's web store and support the channel, and a link to the Patreon where you can get early access to videos, ad free videos, as well as access to polls to vote on upcoming content, and extra entries into the giveaways that I run occasionally, and all kinds of other stuff, so definitely check that out. On that note, huge thanks to the Extremely Cool Kids here on Patreon, the Steam Powered Scoundrels, Dogmatize, and Devin. And thanks for watching. Oh,